Hello everyone, my name is Chelsea and today we are going to be doing a story and meditation about mindfulness of the senses. And our story is called No Ordinary Apple. It was an ordinary day full of ordinary things. After school, Elliot went to his neighbor Carmen's house. He always went there until his parents got home from work. Hi Carmen. Hi Elliot. How was school? It was okay. May I have a snack before I start my homework? Asked Elliot. Of course. Would you like an apple? An apple? Don't you have any candy? Sorry, I'm all out of candy, but try this apple. It's very special. What's so special about it looks pretty ordinary to me. Oh, this is no ordinary apple, said Carmen. It might surprise you. Will it give me superpowers? Well, I don't know. Would you like to find out, she asked. How, said Elliot. Eat the apple like you have never tasted one before. Only then will you discover what makes it so special. But I've eaten about a million apples. How can I do that, asked Elliot. First of all, tell me this. What color is the apple? It's red, Elliot said quickly. Is it? Look very closely. Elliot rolled the apple around in his hands. He noticed that some spots were pure red, some were green, and others were a little brown. There were even a few dull black speckles. Hmm, there's so many different colors here. I guess it's, it isn't just red. A very good observation. And what does it feel like? Um, Elliot looked puzzled. Like an apple, he said. Carmen laughed. Slowly feel it with your fingers. What do you notice? Hmm, it's a little cold. Some parts are smooth and others are bumpy. Some places are hard and some are a little soft. Neat. Elliot was about to take a bite when Carmen raised her hand to stop him. Not yet. You haven't listened to it yet. Listen to the apple? How weird, Elliot thought. Feeling a little silly, he held it up to his ear, expecting to hear something. He heard nothing. Is that the only way to listen to an apple? Carmen asked. Elliot got an idea. He tossed the apple up in the air. As it landed in his hands, he heard a hollow thwop. Elliot smiled. He'd probably made that sound a million times before, but he'd never actually heard it. Now do I take a bite? He asked, growing a bit impatient. Not quite yet. What does it smell like? Elliot took a sniff. Um, fruity, I guess, and a little like flowers and springtime. After another moment, he laughed. It also feels cool and smooth against my nose. Carmen smiled. Can I take a bite now? Elliot could feel his tummy rumbling. Sure, said Carmen, but I wonder what else you might discover if you bite it very slowly. Elliot really wanted to figure out the secret of the apple, so he decided to try. As he held it up to his lips, he noticed his mouth was already watering. He was pretty sure this had never happened with an apple before. As his teeth sunk in, he heard a loud, crisp crunch. He noticed the sweet, apple-y juiciness in his mouth and little juice drops tickling his chin. The peel felt a bit stringy. The flesh felt cool and a little spongy. Then came a burst of the familiar, fresh, apple-y smell. Notice what the apple tastes like in different parts of your mouth. You can do this if you chew it very slowly and roll it around. Oh, and try not to swallow just yet. Do you think you can do that? Asked Carmen. Elliot nodded. First, he chewed with his front teeth, then with the teeth on one side and then the other. Next, he rolled the chewed up apple around in his mouth. He even tried smooshing the apple against the top of his mouth with his tongue. He tasted it on the back of his tongue, the center, the front, one side, the other side. He really wanted to swallow the whole time, but he was determined not to. He was going to discover the secret. Are you ready to swallow it now? Yes, please, Elliot said through his apple-filled mouth. Go ahead and see what you feel as the apple travels to your belly. It may help if you close your eyes. Elliot closed his eyes and concentrated as he swallowed. He could feel the moistness of the apple as it went down his throat. His belly had stopped rumbling and even felt a little more full. What did you notice? asked Carmen. You know, the apple did taste different at the front of my mouth rather than at the back, Elliot said. In one part it was sweet and another kind of tart, like two fruits in one. Even after all this time, 
Elliot still wasn't sure what made this particular apple so special. Yes, it was more colorful, more tasty, more fragrant, and more noisy than any apple he had ever eaten. In fact, it was the most apple apple ever, but why? What's the secret? Elliot asked. Why is this apple so super apple-y? What did you do to make it that way? Ah, oh, said Carmen. It's not what I did that made it so special. It's what you did. Elliot looked proud. What I did by slowing down when eating this apple and being curious about how it looks, feels, sounds, smells, and tastes, you made it extraordinary. And you know what? You can do this with any food. Elliot thought about this for a moment. His eyes sparkled. Jelly beans? Sure. Ice cream? Absolutely. Even macaroni and cheese? Elliot couldn't imagine macaroni and cheese being even better. Yes, even macaroni and cheese. Wow! You know, Elliot, oh, pardon me, you can try this with foods that aren't your favorite too. Really? I don't know. Broccoli is pretty gross and peas, I don't think I could ever eat peas so slowly. Well, it's worth a try. Maybe start with one little pea. You might be amazed at what you discover, just like with the apple. Elliot thought for a moment, then he slowly and mindfully ate the rest of the apple. He thought about all the foods he could eat this way. He couldn't wait to show his family and friends. Suddenly, a huge smile washed over his face. He remembered that today was Friday, and that meant pizza night. And that is the end of our story. So today, here are some of the questions for you. Name the ways in which Elliot practiced mindfulness with his apple. Have you ever eaten something without much attention? What happened? Have you ever eaten something with your full attention? Why? And how did you do it? That is the end of our story today. And now we're going to do our meditation. So So this is the meditation that we're going to do today. It is we read a story about eating an apple and we're going to do our meditation about a raisin. So I'm hoping that you might have a raisin in your kitchen somewhere and that you can go find one and do the meditation with a raisin, but don't put it in your mouth yet, okay? So if you can go find one and hold it in your hand, that's the meditation we're going to do today. And if you don't have a raisin at home, that's just fine. We will um, just pretend in our imaginations that because I think most of us know what a raisin is, right? So you can just imagine it in your mind if you don't actually have one. We're going to listen to our bell and then we'll get started. All right, here we go. Hopefully you have your raisin with you and you have not put it in your mouth yet. This is a story about Maria and Jose, about Rinaldo and Luisa, about Dylan and Jonathan and Christopher and Ariel and Becky and the sun and the rain and the wind. Maria worked in California in a field of grapevines with her husband, Jose. They worked very hard all day picking beautiful, plump, juicy grapes by hand off the vines and placing them in little baskets tied around their waists. It was hot in the sunshine and they wore straw hats to shield their heads from the sun. They had to be very careful not to break the skin of the grapes or allow them to become bruised. When their baskets were full, they carefully laid the grapes on long paper trays. The grapes rested in the sunshine on the paper trays until Ronaldo and Luisa came and carefully rolled the trays up into long tubes and loaded them onto a truck. 
Ronaldo drove the truck over to another building on the farm, unloaded the trays, and unrolled them so the grapes could continue to dry into plump, juicy raisins. When the raisins were cured, Ronaldo and Louisa scooped them up into a long conveyor belt where they were poured into cardboard boxes and sealed. Dylan was very proud of those boxes. He had studied package design at the University of Michigan and designed those boxes to be resealable so that people could take out a handful of raisins and close the box back up so the rest of the raisins wouldn't dry out. Ronaldo and Louisa loaded the boxes onto another truck and Jonathan drove that truck all the way from California to Northern Michigan to a grocery store. Christopher unloaded the boxes into the back storage area of the store and late at night Ariel put the boxes on the shelves. During the day Ariel worked as a cashier in the store putting money to put herself through college, earning money to put herself through college. In the meantime Becky was working hard every day at her job as a receptionist in a doctor's office. She was a single mom trying to support her two children, Max and Hope. It was very hard to make ends meet, to pay for the clothes and school supplies and electricity and food that she and her children needed. Max and Hope loved raisins, so Becky always had them on her shopping list. One day she went to the store to buy potatoes and milk and juice and carrots and raisins. Her cashier was Ariel, who greeted her with kind words and helped her put her groceries into her bags. Now, I invite you to look at the raisin in your hand. Notice the color of it and the way it is wrinkled from drying in the sun after the hardworking farm employees picked it and dried it. Think about how it traveled all the way here from California in a truck and how many people worked hard to get it here to you, the farm workers, the truck drivers, the architects and designers, even the people who work on the oil rigs to get fuel for the trucks, the people who work in the grocery stores, and the people in your family who earn the money to buy the raisins and bring them home for you. Now, smell the raisin and think about the sun and the wind and the rain and all the minerals in the soil that helped it to grow into a grape and then be dried into a raisin. Now, with gratitude in your heart for the earth and for all the people who work to bring that raisin to you, put it in your mouth and eat it very slowly. Taste all the goodness in the world in that one piece of dried fruit. I hope you think it's absolutely delicious. We're going to listen to our bell again. Ready? And that is the end of our story and our meditation today. Great to see all of you. I hope that you have a wonderful week. Oh, and that story, the Raisin Meditation, is uh, from a friend, Karen McCarthy, who lives in Traverse City. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye.